Hi, welcome to Westminster College. I'm Dr. Barney Forsyth, the 20th president of Westminster College. And on behalf of the entire campus community, thanks for checking us out. We hope that you will explore all of the exciting opportunities we have for education in our campus community. And when you do, we hope you'll want to come visit us on campus. And if you come to visit us on campus, come see me. I'd love to meet you and get to know you. Welcome to Westminster College. Go Blue Jays. My name's Kelly Sylvie and I'm the Director of Admissions at Westminster College. Welcome. We're glad to have you here and to welcome you to Champ Auditorium where your visit experience in our admissions office will begin. The Elizabeth T. Champ Auditorium, built in 1966, seats 1,400 people for concerts, lectures, dramatic productions, movies, and other college events such as commencement. The lower level houses the Office of Enrollment Services as well as a music rehearsal space and classroom. Westminster College was founded in 1851 with the purpose of preparing citizens of character for useful service to the community. That mission is timeless and it's also timely for Westminster College today has the mission to develop young men and women to be leaders of character for service in a global community. Indeed, the nature of our community has expanded over the course of the last century and a half. And now we are preparing our graduates to make a difference in the world wherever they find themselves. And in fact, we've assembled that world here in Fulton, Missouri on our campus in America's heartland, a safe and secure place where the world can come together to study, to learn from one another, and to prepare themselves to make a difference wherever they go after graduation. We've got students from 28 states in the United States and over 60 countries all gathered here to prepare themselves for leadership and service for a lifetime. Westminster College is on the move and we'd like for you to come experience that momentum with us. We've recently received a number of very strong ratings from national outlets, including Forbes magazine, which rated Westminster College one of the top values in American higher education. And we know that that's important to parents as well as to students. Our national survey of student engagement results are off the charts. Our students tell us that Westminster College ranks in the top 10% or better of all colleges and universities in important educational experiences that make a difference in student learning. So what's the transformation that takes place between the columns? Well, at the core is a high quality liberal arts education. You know, when you really look at the history of American higher education, you notice that the liberal arts education was really the key to leader development and to leader preparation. And so we start at Westminster College with a great liberal arts education, small classes, professional faculty who are experts in their field and care deeply about the learning of our students. Our faculty are actively involved with our students in undergraduate research, working side by side in the field at research benches, in laboratories around the, the city and the country for our students to learn by doing. Well, because every space is a classroom, every encounter with a student is a learning opportunity, then we like to think about Westminster education from the inside out. And that's what we mean by turn your college thinking inside out. We're learning inside some classrooms that are in academic buildings and outside in classrooms that are in a variety of other settings in the community, in the country. But you need to come to Westminster and see that because Westminster has a feel to it that it's really hard to describe. And so we want all of you to come and take a look at what we have to offer. You'll catch the feeling when you interact with our students and with our faculty members and our staff. And you'll see for yourself what it means to turn your college thinking inside out. My favorite thing about Westminster is the column ceremony. When you're a freshman, 
you know, you've only been here for a day. You get to walk through and you get to experience the tradition that's here. We'd love for you to come and see our campus. And when you do, you'll notice on the hill, on campus, six freestanding columns, originally part of Westminster Hall, uh, now a symbol of what is enduring and valuable about Westminster College. And at the start of every school year, our new uh, incoming class assembles and marches to the base of the columns. And there, they are administered the Athenian Oath. They promise to live as members of our learning community and to uphold our values and our traditions of excellence. They're then invited to walk through the columns and join the rest of the community assembled on the uphill side of the columns in full regalia to become members of the Westminster community. Four years later, the graduating class with diplomas in hand march back to the columns and then through the columns out into the world to make a difference as leaders of character for service. Now Westminster tradition holds that in the four years that our students are here, they, they never walk across the space of the columns. It's sacred and holy ground. And the story of the Westminster education is the story of the transformation that takes place in the lives of our students between the columns, between freshman convocation and senior graduation. Westminster Hall. Built in 1911 to replace the original administration building, which was destroyed by fire, Westminster Hall is the main administrative office building. It was renovated in 1973 to 1974. Located in the building are classrooms, faculty offices, the Office of Academic Affairs, including the Vice President and Dean of Faculty, Associate Dean of Faculty, Registrar, Director of Institutional Research, the Dean of Student Life, and the Office of Business Affairs the Learning Opportunities Center, the Student Counseling and Health Services Center, the Office of International and Off-Campus Programs, including Study Abroad, the College Chaplain, and the LM and Virginia Atchison Computer Center are also housed here. Newnham Hall. Named for the late Eugene Newnham, 1932, this building, formerly called the Hall of Science, is the oldest on campus. Built in 1901, the structure has been extensively remodeled on the top and main levels to provide space for general classrooms and faculty offices in foreign languages, sociology, anthropology, and classics. The lower level serves as the Office of Career Services and includes the Richard Career Resource Center, a large job and internship exploration and support center. Career Services emphasizes internships and networking. Two rooms are set up for mock interviews. Westminster has a 90 to 96 percent employment rate for graduating seniors within the first six months of graduation. The Wallace H. Coulter Science Center. Originally built in 1969 and extensively remodeled in 2004 with an $18 million expansion, the Wallace H. Coulter Science Center showcases some of the highlights in Coulter's illustrious career. Although he only attended Westminster College for one year before going to Georgia Tech, he was so impressed by his experience that after he made his fortune inventing the Coulter counter, which counts blood cells and platelets, he returned and donated a huge sum to start the project to renovate our science center. The building houses two cadaver labs, the only building of its kind in the U.S. Classrooms, laboratory facilities for biology, chemistry, computer science, environmental studies, psychology, and physics. Faculty offices for these disciplines, as well as mathematical sciences, are also housed here. Faculty were asked to provide input before architects were hired to draw up the plans. Note the double helix staircase that represents DNA. The focus here is to create an exceptional learning atmosphere and to offer rooms for student research on a large scale. There are many study areas in the hallways with internet access, smart boards, and dry erase boards for student use. The center is open for study until 2 a.m.
The Reeves Memorial Library houses an excellent collection of books, periodicals, and electronic resources. It also provides access to nearly 14 million volumes through a statewide library consortium of colleges and universities. The library subscribes to 400 periodicals and provides access to the full text of articles from more than 3,000 periodicals through online databases. The collection includes multimedia materials, informational and music CDs, and videotapes. The Hazel Wing of the library is the center of technology on campus. It houses two computer labs, one with PCs, the others with Macs, video editing equipment, classrooms, study rooms, and a language lab. The entire campus is wireless and the dorms have Ethernet hookup available. This is the Washington West Mansion, now home of the President's Office. Originally a gift from Dr. Washington West in 1907, this building was the home to seven Westminster College presidents. It's a famous historical site because in 1946, this is where Sir Winston Churchill had the famous Kingdom of Calloway luncheon before he gave the Iron Curtain speech next door in the historic gym. In 1968, this mansion was converted to the president's office and is now home of alumni and college relations as well as my office. We hope you'll enjoy your tour of Westminster College. Have a great Blue Jay Day. Built in 1928, this was the site of Churchill's Iron Curtain speech in 1946, when Winston Churchill accepted an invitation from Harry Truman to visit Westminster. The gymnasium was completely renovated in 1972. New bleachers and flooring were added later. The gymnasium was listed as a landmark on the National Register of Historic Places in 1969. It accommodates basketball and volleyball activities and houses athletic staff offices. A swimming pool, locker rooms, classrooms, and a fitness room are located on the ground floor. Hunter Activity Center Opened for use in the fall of 1989, the Hunter Activity Center is a 29,000 square foot facility providing athletic, recreational, meeting, and social space. The gym features a suspended jogging track, a racquetball court, and a cardiovascular workout and weight room. A central location for meetings, Hunter Activity Center includes the Herman Lounge, smaller conference rooms, and a music practice room. The lower level houses the Johnson College Inn snack bar, a television lounge, game area, the Student Government Association's office, the Student Publications office, a dark room, and student mailboxes. Staff offices for the Emerson Center for Leadership and Service and the Student Activities Director are also housed in Hunter. A 10-acre section of campus is devoted to athletics, including a football field, the saucier baseball field, a softball field, sand volleyball courts, a soccer field, six all-weather tennis courts, a practice field, and recreation area. The golf team has access to the nearby 18-hole Tanglewood Golf Course. Men's sports include basketball, baseball, football, soccer, cross-country, track, tennis, and golf. Women's sports include basketball, softball, soccer, cross-country, track, tennis, golf, cheerleading, dance team, and volleyball. Westminster is a member of the St. Louis Intercollegiate Athletic Conference. Miller Leadership Hall. Built in 2006 as part of the Westminster Capital Campaign, Miller Leadership Hall houses the Backer Dining Room, the main dining hall for students on the meal plan. There are also three private dining rooms and a cozy lounge. 19 meals are served here per week. Breakfast from 7.30 a.m. to 10.30 a.m., lunch from 11 a.m. to 4.30 p.m., and dinner from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. The Leadership Hall is located just south of the Kent and Judith Miller Student Center and is connected by a walkway which allows both buildings to be used for meal and catering functions. The walkway includes three stained glass windows that were preserved from the Swope Chapel. Two other windows are on display in the Development Center on 7th Street. The Winston Churchill Quadrangle. The Winston Churchill Quadrangle, 
or the Quad, is comprised of five buildings that traditionally house Westminster's freshman class. Each of the five buildings accommodates about 300 students in eight-person suites, which cuts down on noise and distraction with no corridor running the length of the building. Each suite has four rooms and a bathroom. The rooms have central air conditioning with individual thermostats, two internet hookups, and a phone. Each hall has a washer and dryer, vending machine, ice machine, microwave, and kitchen sink. The quad is the place to meet friends, to hang out, and to enjoy a pickup game of football when the weather is nice. Welcome to the Davidson Leadership Plaza, named after one of Westminster's most distinguished presidents, Dr. Larry Davidson, who brought Winston Churchill Memorial and Library to our campus community. Leadership and service at the core of Westminster College's mission, the Davidson Leadership Plaza, at the center of our campus community, to remind us of our mission, to prepare young men and women to be leaders of character in a global community. Papers. Welcome to the Winston Churchill Memorial and Library and to the National Churchill Museum on the campus of Westminster College. In 1946, Churchill delivers his Iron Curtain Address at Westminster College. In 1969, Westminster remembers his visit by dedicating the Church of St. Mary to the Virgin Aldermanbury. If you come to Westminster, make sure you check out the National Churchill Museum, see how we discuss Churchill, remember his life and times, and indicate to you how Churchill, as leader, is an inspiration today and tomorrow. And that we hold the power to save the future, that I feel the duty to speak out now, that I have the occasion and the opportunity to do so. If you come to Westminster College, make sure you come to the National Churchill Museum. See Churchill brought to life through sight, sound and touch, and understand what we believe to be true, that Churchill is an inspirational leader for now and for all time. Why, of all places, did Winston Churchill come to Fulton, Missouri, to Westminster College? Well, he came for a number of reasons. Firstly, he receives an invite from Westminster President Bullitt McClure. McClure cleverly used the good offices of a Westminster alum, Major General Harry Vaughan, military aide to President Truman. Vaughan persuaded Truman to add a postscript to the invite sent by McClure. What did it say? This is a great college in my home state. Please say you'll do it. I'll introduce you, best regards, Harry Truman. This is the clincher for Churchill. This is what brings him half a world away to Westminster College to deliver perhaps the most significant speech of his long career. The Iron Curtain Address delivered in the old gymnasium at Westminster College. The Churchill Institute is about trying to blend together three distinct elements of the Westminster experience. Firstly, the inspirational leadership offered by Winston Churchill was found at the National Churchill Museum but also the practical opportunities to, to lead and to serve offered by the Bill Emerson Center for Leadership and Service. And thirdly, the wider academic and cultural experiences offered by the Center for Engaging the World. Blending these three things together helps create leaders in a global community, the mission of Westminster College. This is the Breakthrough Sculpture on the campus of Westminster College, created from eight sections of the original Berlin Wall and brought here by artist Edwina Sands to commemorate the end of the Cold War. The Breakthrough Sculpture, created by artist Edwina Sands, Winston Churchill's granddaughter, stands on the campus of Westminster College, the very place where her grandfather, Winston Churchill, spoke of the beginning of that same Cold War.
Hi, welcome to Westminster. My name is Pat Kirby and I am the International Student Recruiter and I also work with development and alumni. And this is the Development Center where we primarily try to raise money for student scholarships to help our students, both domestic and international, come to Westminster. My problem is that I've been here 34 years and I can't leave. And the best part of my problem is that we are probably stronger now than we have ever been before in terms of a college itself. Certainly in 1979 when we went co-ed, we all of a sudden became very strong. But in the last four or five years, our enrollment has grown to over a thousand students now. Our international student enrollment has grown. We now represent 66 countries on our campus. We have 173 international students. We, I think, are either third or fourth in the country with the highest percentage of undergraduate international students on our campus. Um, what is special about the campus, I think, is that almost all of our students live on campus. Everything is within walking distance. There's sort of that show me Missouri attitude where people are friendly and they reach out to each other and they take a great deal of pride in our campus. I know it's harder for international students who may not be able to travel, but especially for those students and for our domestic students, the only way to experience Westminster, and I think this is true with any school, is to go visit the campus and find out what the chemistry is, what's the attitude there, how are you greeted, what are faculty, staff, and students like? And I think that's what we see with many of the students who visit our campus. If they're looking for a school of about a thousand students, and a school that cares about them where they can be challenged academically and involved in a lot of extracurricular activities, the reality is this is the perfect place for them. So the campus visit is, is really important for those who are able to come visit. Then you decide for yourself. You know, those of us who work here, we love the place and we probably see it differently than somebody seeing it for the first time. But we find that those who see, visit us and see it for the first time they find that it really often is their home for the next four years. We hope you've come to appreciate the beauty of the Westminster College campus. I'd like to tell you a story about a mother and her son who experienced that beauty in their first trip to Westminster College. After seeing the columns and the hill and the leadership fountain, the chapel and the freshman quad, and the Berlin Wall, the son turned to his mother and said, Mom, this is a place where I could study and learn. Come visit us, and we think you'll find out that is true. Welcome to Westminster College. visiting Westminster College. We were glad to have a chance to show you our campus and our wonderful educational opportunities. And we hope you'll come back to campus so that we can show you how to turn your college thing inside out.